In this video, I'll show you how to display to-do lists from the built-in to-do integration in your dashboards. With this, you'll be able to take any of your to-do lists and it will let you toggle or untoggle tasks as completed right from your dashboard. You will also be able to give each task a unique icon and a priority, and we can of course style the cards as we want. This will be a very code-heavy video, so pay close attention. As always, you can find the full code on the Gumroad link in the description. To start, I will create a new to-do list using the built-in integration. You can call this whatever you want, I'll just call it house chores. Then I'll add a few tasks to it. The trick with this whole setup is that I will format the description field in a specific way. This will let me, for example, add an icon to the task when I display it in the dashboard, and I can give each task a priority. You can probably also use the due date field if you want to, and later display and sort by that in the dashboard. So in my example, I will write one, that's my priority for this task. Then use the pipe symbol and then paste in an icon. You can use Material Design Icons website to search for icons. The pipe symbol is just a separator I can use in the code later on. Then I'll just do the same for the other tasks. If we now go into DevTools and search for this to-do list, we can see that it shows up, but it doesn't actually give us any more information other than how many tasks there are in the list. But if we instead go into the Actions tab and run the To Do Get Items action, we will get a list of all the tasks in the list. It also gives us the description field and the status. Knowing this, we can create a simple template sensor that uses this list so we can display it in our dashboard. This is inside my template.yaml file where I place all my template sensors. The sensor I create here is a trigger-based sensor, so at the top I will add a few triggers. There might be other clever triggers we could use here as well, but this works okay. Then these triggers will run an action. I accidentally wrote service here. This works, but you might want to use the newer syntax instead, so just write action instead of service. This action will run the get items action and store the results into a variable called tasks. Then we can create the sensor. I'll give it a name and a unique ID. Then I use a relatively simple Jinja code to get the number of tasks in the list. This is effectively exactly the same as the built-in to-do sensor. We grab the items array of the to-do sensor from the tasks variable. We then use the Jinja code to count the items. Now we just need to create an attribute that displays the list of tasks including the description and status. I call this attribute tasks. The code is the same as the state, but we just change count to list. Now we need to save the file and restart Home Assistant for the sensor to show up. When Home Assistant is back, you can see that we have a sensor that includes the tasks we added to the to-do list. Let's start creating the dashboard card. I will use auto entities to display the list as individual cards. But to make that a little easier, I've first created a button card template that I can use inside Auto Entities. I'm not going to go through it line for line, because I've done similar cards many times on this channel. But what's important is that I have a few variables at the top that we can control in the Auto Entities card code. For example, I've added a custom field called Icon. This will be the checked or unchecked indicator on the right side. You can see from the code that it is looking at the variable called Completed and it's changing the icon depending on the variable. The styles for this custom field is just some padding to move it away from the edge. The card styling uses the background and margin variables. The grid is a three by two grid. The main icon on the left gets a fixed size. The code for the IMG cell background is probably a little over-engineered. It's similar to the custom field earlier. It just slightly changes the background behind the icon based on the completed variable. Icon is the same again. It changes color based on the completed variable. The label and name also changes color, and I have some basic text styling for both of these. When you're happy with your card, you can copy the whole thing except for the very first line where you define the card type. Then, in the raw configuration editor, we can paste it into the button card templates area as a new template. If you don't have this section, you need to create it. I'm gonna call this template template sensor task and just make sure the indentation is correct. We can then save it and start making the actual task list card using auto entities. Let's create a new card and select the auto entities card. 
You're not going to be able to create this from the UI, so let's head straight into the code editor. Remove the default filter and set the card type to grid, columns to 1, and square to false. In the filter section, I will use a template filter. It's important to use the pipe at the end of that sentence. Start by creating open and closed square brackets. We'll create all code inside of those. I think the easiest way to explain this is to go through line by line. First add card underscore param cards above the filter. This first line gets all the tasks from the task attribute of our template sensor. And it stores it all in a variable called to do's. This checks if the to do's variable exists and has content. This might make a bit more sense later on when we add the else function. The next line loops through all the items with status of needs action, and it sorts them by the description field. The description field is that number and icon we added in the very beginning. This line splits the description by using the pipe symbol. This way we can later display the priority and icon separately. The next two lines stores the priority part of the description into one variable and the icon into a second variable. The icon has a default fallback in case we forget to add it. Now we create the actual card that we want to be using. There's a very specific syntax we have to use for this, so just be careful with all the quotation marks and commas. This is where we define the template sensor and the button card template that we have created earlier. Next is the variables section. We can, for example, use to do dot summary to display the main text of the task. The next line looks a bit weird, but the second part where it says dot priority is just static text. For the icon, we can call the icon variable we created above. And for the rest of the variables inside the button card, we can just use fixed values. The next bit defines tap action to mark task as completed when pressed. You can see that it sets the status to completed. Here we have to use the old way of triggering the action by using call service. Important to note here that the entity ID is the actual to-do list, not the template sensor we created. I decided to also add a hold action to remove tasks from the list. This is destructive, and you won't be able to bring tasks back. The only difference between tap and hold action is the service, and that we have to remove the status passed onto the action from hold action. Now we just need to close the card definition and finish off the for loop. If we now just add a simple else and end if tag, we can see that the card shows up. But if I actually tap on any of these cards, we're effectively removing them from the list. This is because we are currently only showing the items with the status of needs action. So we need to pretty much do exactly the same once more, but this time display the tasks with the completed status. So copy the whole for loop and paste it in before the else tag. And you can see that it will now display the same task item twice. All we need to do now is change the first filter from needs action to completed. That will bring back our finished tasks, but let's also change the background variable to green. And let's set the completed variable to true in the button card template. The last thing we need to remember is to change the tap action of the finished tasks. We don't need to be able to change completed tasks into completed tasks, so let's also change the status here so if we tap completed tasks, they return to tasks that needs action. And that's pretty much it for this video. This is probably my most advanced video yet, and if you're still watching, I'm impressed. The key takeaway is that Auto Entities card is really cool, and you can do so many interesting things with it. The very last thing I've done is that I've put the card into a vertical stack card and placed a button that links to the actual to-do list above the tasks. That way I can click that button if I want to add tasks. I have also experimented with a form that I can toggle the visibility of, but it isn't really elegant enough yet for it to be featured properly in a video. But if you want to give it a go, I've created two input text helpers and one input number helper. I then have a button that runs a script that adds the values from the helpers into a task in the to-do list. It works, but it's a bit annoying to set up because you need a lot of helpers to do a small thing. Also, the input text and number helpers doesn't look very good in the dashboard. I hope you learned something from this video. It was certainly hard to make. Thanks for watching. Until next time.